now that you've hit record, just let me quickly recap. You Please. Know, big open SSF um, announcement, and I've posted the press release in the chat, uh, basically about the uh, raising $10 million. Okay. Yep. That is a terrific announcement. I am really looking forward to uh, helping to to get to get this this balance off our books. Yeah. Now, now we got um, now we got to take the money and turn it into actual work, and uh, that's an awesome problem. Uh, yep, absolutely. So we have the da 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 da. da um, working group notes. So I'm going to open that up, share that. You guys are welcome to. Add in any topics that we want to talk about today. We'll get an update okay. from from Luigi and on um, security MD. Just share. Michael, can you post that within the chat, please? The link to the Absolutely. notes. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, is Don't see it. Yep. No. Sorry, it's still waiting for me. The meeting notes on the other YAML. Yeah. Uh, the the the, the oh. meeting notes. We'll we'll post the YAML in. Okay. The, the, the the YAML is down here, um, but if you don't have the. Well, I I, I, I was thinking the the meeting notes here. So this. Yeah, is... Yes. Uh, in the chat, the link. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Cool. All right, so let's do this for today. We'll do we'll talk about um, NSF um, security dot yaml updates. I got update. Um, do we missing anything else? So the. There's time I can do an update on security reviews, the repo. Absolutely. Nice, cool. So we covered the first one. If you guys have anything else to add, just just add them in. Um, oh, and uh, uh, Sergio, uh, welcome. Um, you want to? Uh, you don't have to, but if, if you'd like to introduce yourself, uh, we can just kind of real quick say who we are. Um, Sergio? Yeah. It's all good. Well, if you come off mute or whatever, just feel free to just jump in. Oh, I um, see mute off. Oh, there you go. Hi, Sergio. Um, I'm Sergio, and um, well, I was a software engineer at Arena World, but right now I'm just like doing my own thing. And previously, I contributed to the Brave browser and I also contributed to like um, Pixar Open Timeline IO, and I'm here just to learn more about security. Awesome, awesome, welcome. Um, I get since there's only five of us, we can just do, do a quick roundtable. My name is Mike Scavetta. I lead this working group. Uh, I'm a uh, I lead a open source security and tooling team at Microsoft, and I. Um, uh, I just have my fingers in a lot of pies related to open source and security and trying to agitate um, organizations to um, do good things. Um, David? So David A. Wheeler, I work at the Linux Foundation. Um, <clears throat> my official title is Director of Open Source Supply Chain Security. But what that really means is that I run around to different groups like this one and try to be helpful and supportive and try to help out uh, doing various things. I've been working on you know, securing software or open source software for literally decades. I will not admit how many. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, you mentioned, um, uh, Sergio, you mentioned you're interested in learning more about security. Uh, the OpenSSF actually has a training, a little training course on edX um, that you might want to uh, check out. I will post a link in the notes. Um, the cost is hard to beat. It is literally free. So uh, if you're interested in how to develop secure software, go take that course. 
Um, hopefully you'll learn good stuff. Hi, Dylan. Hey guys, <clears throat> my name is Dylan. I um, am a software engineer at Microsoft and I'm uh, very involved in the security space there and, and also enjoy kind of learning more about and exposing myself to the open source space. Um, I think I joined this group about a year ago now and um, yeah, um, my short spiel. Awesome. Uh, Luigi or Amir, whoever can come off mute first. Okay. Uh, I'm Luigi, a security engineer in a Swiss startup. Previously, I have worked in Arduino, an open source company based in Italy. And uh, I joined this project uh, more than one year ago. And uh, I am generally interested in uh, uh, security for open source ecosystem. And I'm Amir, Amir Montezeri from OSTIF, the Open Source Technology Improvement Fund. We're an independent nonprofit focused on improving open source security through independent expert reviews and other types of security engagements. Cool. Awesome. Um, okay, so we did the welcome. We uh, we talked about the OpenSSF's announcement uh, today, which uh, which is which is terrific. Um, Luigi, do you want to give an update on Security YAML? Yes. Um, Feel free I, to share uh, if you prefer or okay, just perfect. I try uh, because I am on Linux. Uh, this is the first time that I share the screen, <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, you can see everything. Uh, this is okay. Um, I have st uh, in the last two weeks, uh, uh, I have tried to formalize the introduction and especially the problem statement. In particular, I have uh, um, used uh, uh, a user story approach to define uh, the statement for our problems. So we have a uh, different uh, uh, person or potential interested person in the YAML file. We have the security researcher. We have the generic user that can be, uh, this means a developer that want to use uh, uh, a particular packages, for example, or open source project. Uh, this means also the CTO that want, in, want to implement uh, a particular technology for the next year in a company. Uh, we have the maintainer. Uh, I prefer, I. I have preferred to use a maintainer instead of uh, um, author because uh, sometimes, uh, uh, I mean, the author or the authors are uh, uh, the people that uh, create uh, the first commit for a new project, but and they cannot change. You are the author of a particular project, but maintainer can change over time. And so I prefer to use maintainer. Um, and I have tried to define some uh, requirement for the YAML. In particular, um, I Mike uh, uh, forward me a good tweet uh, with a good input for the YAML related to how uh, the maintainers of a particular resource project can receive the report without receiving too much spam. So probably we need to understand how to define thread modeling for a particular open source project. And uh, there are some open questions uh, at the moment. Uh, if you want to add comment and contribute, uh, feel free to do, because uh, there are literally open questions. At the moment, I have no solution. And uh, the next step are formalize some uh, old comments that, that are in the document and create a first example of, uh, of sort of template for the YAML file. I hope to do the in the next two weeks. And uh, that's it. I can share the link in the chat so you can open it easily. This is interesting, although it, it actually is very different than the information that uh, I was emphasizing. Um, I'm not sure I would say no to this, um, but it doesn't include the primary purpose of this tool, of this document that I thought uh, that I had in mind. That's OK. That means that we're clarifying through this process uh, the difference. In my 
uh, notion, the primary purpose was to provide automated tools like scorecard information about how the project um, uh, counters at attacks. And I think that's basically another bullet. I'd like to add it to the top. Um, I, I, the, the way that I'm reading this is that they're actually the same, is that if the answers to these questions were machine readable, then the scorecard can take advantage of them. So if the scorecard wants to see that static analysis is used, and one of these fields is like static analysis, and colon, we use foo. But yeah, I, but, I, but I think that that's, I mean, as a user, I want to know, well, actually as a tool, uh, I, I think oh, at least sure. noting that, tool, that tools are, you know, we do say it's automatically extractable, but uh, at least noting near the top, yeah that and then saying basically answering the questions as listed below uh, the ballot point all are not ordered at the moment technically so uh, um there is no a priority i have just the mean i have a rewrite your point so i have used your uh notes and i have just rewrite your point using uh, uh the user story I have added some uh, new points, for example, based on feedback that we have received on Twitter. And uh, yes, the minimum uh, um, viable product uh, need to um, need to have uh, a file for the scorecard, the security scorecard, need to have information related to the uh, vulnerability disclosure policy or security MD. And uh, I have added the maintainer contacts because maybe you want to have a contact for for a particular project and um, but uh, I suppose that uh, these files can be useful both for the maintainers and uh, both for the user or a researcher or other people that want to have information related to the project. Uh, in the next step uh, probably we need to formalize uh, a first uh, uh, version of this YAML file but uh, being a YAML file, we can uh, improve it over time, uh, change the version. So probably the YAML file need to have a version and so. By the way, um, it's already possible to record project maintainers through other ways. Um, I don't know if it, we would consider those adequately maintainable, uh, automatically uh, extractable. I mean, there is the security.txt, but the, that only applies to websites. Yes. Uh, there is, a, for example, uh, I in the problem statement, I have defined a lot of history, a lot, some history, some story related to the user. But at the same time, I know that it is difficult uh, convince people to follow best practice. For example, security.txt is a, a really easy file with a three line with a easy template, but uh, only few websites uh, implement it, especially if we, we check the top uh, 200 on Alexa or on Google. So, um, so probably the first version of uh, this YAML need to be really easy and totally automated based, based on the scorecard and other two or three entries, I suppose it is just uh, uh, an hypothesis to, so people can start to use it, to use it, uh, to implement it in the project uh, without having too much friction, too many friction. And so um, I like the idea related to the security.txt, but probably for an open source project, is, it is not enough. For example, uh, if uh, scorecard uh, can have a lot of uh, false positive result and uh, maybe uh, it is not so easy to automate it. And uh, if you want to share what are the mm, tools that you use to lint the code or to scan the code, probably uh, it is a manual uh, task for the maintainers because uh, sometimes scanner cannot identify the right tool and uh, and so. I, w I wonder if a GitHub app, is it, would a GitHub app, do GitHub apps have their own UI? No, they probably don't. Um, I don't know a well, thing, but it, but a thing that like scans your code and says, "Hey, this is what we this is what we found." Like, does this look right? And like, have the user go through kind of this wizard process 
that the output of kind of like what we do for the security reviews, the output of which is a file that they commit back to their repo. Exactly. Um, there is there is a comment uh, in the document. Uh, for example, we have a quick start for the security review. Yeah. Uh, I need to formalize that, this part still. And uh, yes, we need to offer a standard. So the schema for the YAML, because technically, if I want, I don't think so. But if I want, I, I can technically uh, write it manually. And at the same time, we need to offer tool to uh, to uh, auto generate it and to lint it also. Yeah. So uh, the user can be sure that uh, the YAML uh, is following the standard and so. I don't know. Uh, I need to continue to formalize the document, of course. This looks terrific. Nice job. Um... Uh, I'm waiting to share it just because I want to finish to the user scenario and the sample. But uh, technically, if uh, uh, we want just to start uh, to discuss the, the various point, I can edit the document in and it's not a problem. I can adapt it. Um, I, I don't know, this may be obvious actually, um, but it's like, out of curiosity, is the main uh, use case for scorecard to kind of add additional like information to it or to kind of like correct information that may be like, you know, upset people who, because do, do you guys remember how we had like, certain like metrics in the metrics dashboard that uh, people complained about. Like, so is it to like necessarily fix certain things or is it to add new things or some kind of combination? I, I suppose it doesn't matter either way. It's uh, helpful, uh, very helpful. Uh, but. It, I mean, uh, it is a good question. Uh, at the moment, technically the scorecard offer more results than uh, uh, the results uh, showed in the uh, metric dashboard. So probably initially we can offer the same uh, um, value, but uh, over time uh, uh, we can add uh, other entries or the fields in the YAML file. And so we can uh, really use uh, the security scorecard that offer a lot of information related to the security project. Uh, so probably it can be different from the security from the from the uh, metric dashboard. The metric dashboard offer uh, the same value for all projects, but uh, uh, the scorecard uh, has uh, more uh, uh, scanner that we are not using at the moment. In the in the API, we have the value, but not showing the website in the front end for the user. I I. I... I, I I think David though just to riff on on a part of your question, um, I think it could go either way, but I think the better approach is that the scorecard, as part of their calculation, they say, uh, does the project have more than two maintainers or two recent contributors? Look, look if, supposedly that was one of the metrics. Um, and they didn't find any evidence for or against that, or it was ambiguous or whatever. Um, if they programmatically read uh, OSSF security and they saw that there were four maintainers listed, they could use that as part of the calculation. Similarly for, um, do you use static analysis? Uh, I don't see any static analysis in your repo, but OSSF security says that you are. So I will provisionally say you are something like that right right I, I, the the tools one I, the, both for the sast and das tools is in, in my mind kind of the original genesis yeah. of this little project because we're trying to measure you know you know things like do you have tools and the problem with like the static analysis tools is it turns out to be incredibly hard to answer that question uh i'll 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 point to a particular case i know of but just just a, a, a data point uh, the CI best practices badge uses several static analysis tools, but we use Circle CI. We use um, uh, tools like Breakman, which uh, you know, and the scorecards doesn't know anything about Circle CI. It doesn't know anything about Breakman, and so therefore it doesn't find it. It's not that it doesn't exist. 
it's just that figuring out all the cases turns out to be really hard. So having a way to automatically provide the otherwise missing information. Um, right. The CI best practices badge also has to deal with this, although a different way. You know, we basically say, hey, give us some text on justifications. Mm -hmm. And you point because right. we, we didn't even try to automate some of these things. Right. <laughs> it's, it's hard. Right. And, and, and honestly, maybe it's more efficient anyway. So doing it here, now you could argue who should be in the center of the wheel, but let's suppose it's this, it, OSS of Security YAML is at the center, then the the logic of like, how do you figure out if Circle CI has static analysis integrated or whatever, um, that's written in one place, the information goes here, and then everybody else, scorecard and all of its other, you know, all of its peers can pull from that one place. Now, right. maybe and scorecard would say, well, we should be the center of the universe, and that's fine too, but like, I, I don't even think you have to claim center of universe. Yeah. It's basically, I, I, um, you know, for a scorecard, I would say as much as possible, try to automate. However, yeah. we know that some areas are notoriously hard to automate. So here is an automatic way to overcome those limitations. So yes, uh, if you have, you know, if scorecards can, can automatically get all the information it needs, that's great, but here's the escape hatch. I, I, I view this yeah. uh, openness, uh, this uh, YAML file as kind of the escape hatch to provide information when you can't figure it out any other way. And I, you know, frankly, it would be unsurprising that some you just it's too hard and you it's always easier just to provide the YAML and others. You can imagine it being automated, but, you know, tools are always imperfect and. I, I run the tools option. locally. I don't check anything in. There's nothing in the repo to indicate it, but I pinky swear that I run the right tools. <laughs> yeah, that's and, and actually this raises a legitimate concern. I don't think that we have dealt with it. It's the elephant in the room. Let's talk about it. The problem with this approach overall is fundamentally we are accepting a pinky swear. I think that's, I, I don't think that we uh, can hide that. I think we need to address that head on. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, and, and for example, I could easily see maybe tools might, might want to have two outputs. Here's with this information and here's the information that we can independently confirm. Um, and I, I, I think I think that's going to be one of the most obvious counters to this whole approach. Uh, you know, I will. Why don't we just start? I'll, I will try to quickly type that in, and then uh, people yeah. can convince about that. But um, one, I, th I think that that totally makes sense. I think where you get into into the validation of it. So uh, if if you take skim, or at least the concept of skim. You know, you say, so you have this, you know, databasey thing of uh, claims and assertions and backing, you know, integrity flags and metadata and, and whatnot that says, you know, you can trust this because it really, really, really came from GitHub running this on the project, and you trust GitHub. So that 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 that, that kind of thing. Um, well, what what kind of assurance does the authors? own statement that they pinky swear to do the right thing mean? And the answer is it's something. It's certainly not as much as some other ones. Um, so I, I, th I think it comes down to let's get, let's, you know, uh, let's have more information, even if all of the information is not uh, completely, let's say, trustworthy. Um, and as long as it's um, and, and then we'll we'll evaluate the trustworthiness of that at the time you come to make a decision. Uh, is how I would. I had a thought on, um, and I apologize if I repeat some of the stuff Mike just said. I was kind of like thinking about what I was just about to say, and I might have missed the exact same thing. I don't know, but 
Um, so I was just thinking of like, you know, what would like make me more inclined to like take a pinky swear from someone just in more of like a social, you know, just very generic sense. Right. So I think, so like a few of the things I thought about and, you know, some of these could be worse than others, but you know, if there are any things that we can, like we can add a bunch of logic to kind of help ourselves out here. Like for example, if there's any things that, uh, uh, you know, that were promised obviously that we can somehow that are more verifiably wrong in some kind of automated sense, that should be a red flag. If there's, um, you know, if, if someone has nine out of 10 things with, you know, great verified reviews, oh, they use this tool and this tool and this tool and this tool. And then just the 10th tool, like they, you know, they're saying we do this, but we can't confirm this. Um, you know, it's that, that I would say that's a lot better than having pinky squares across the board on like all of their metrics saying, we do all of these things, you know, oh, you know, there's just like one thing that it was, you know, we don't, we couldn't really uh, follow suit with here. And then the last one was, uh, yeah, and then I think Mike might have said this, but uh, if there is some kind of metric or final output in the scorecard that's kind of in between, like, no, like we know nothing and this is a very good, uh, like they definitely use this, there could be like some kind of, uh, you know, uh, probably good, but not verified, like, you know, that doesn't have the final check or doesn't get the bonus points, the extra, extra good grade, like that. So there's like a lot of ways I think you can either just like make yourself a lot more confident in that pinky square or just like convey as to the very end user, this is a pinky square. So that's kind of my tangent on this or long digression, but yeah, it is a pinky square at the end of the day. So something to think about. Great. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see here. Um, now I can tell you how the, I, I lead the CIA best practices badge uh, project um, where we do take assertions from projects usually. Uh, but what we do for every for a couple questions where we can verify that the claim is false. We don't care what the user says. We'll act, you know, if a user says, it, it, we'll, we will fill in a form automatically in those cases. And if the user says, we do X, and then we can show that they don't do X, we throw away their claim and we say, no, you still don't do X. Um, in many cases, though, we can't, you know, us, us, um, assure ourselves of this. So in that case, what we do is we ask for justification, uh, which is basically text that um, uh, that includes the rationale and ideally with URLs that point to the evidence. Um, I would suggest maybe that might be a good for all of these things. Um, and heck, I'll even go further. So Michael, we, we talked about this earlier, but it's not really recorded here in this document. Uh, one, you know, we, we've talked about the use of, of one tool, which is, uh, you know, the, these these tools include, okay, scorecard and the CIA best practices badge. Yes, I mean, I what possibility the, would be include all the criteria, and you if and you could just simply say, hey, I want a badge, and all the data gets sucked right into the CIA best practices badge from this file, and we could also go the other way and generate. The, this file from the CI best practices badge. Uh, so, David, I want to be sure that I have rightly understood. Do you want to offer um, um, a tool, a linter, or some tool to generate this YAML file in a sort of a, in a sort of wizard or automatic way? Um, you want to have uh, the output from scorecard, uh, CII best practice, uh, to, to give the CII best practice or the CII best practice. But uh, at the same time, a uh, uh, tool can generate uh, false positive. For example, uh, a tool, uh, the scorecard uh, sometimes cannot recognize that there is a GitHub workflow to check the code. And uh, if uh, the maintainers give evidence, in the YAML file with, the, for example, a link to the GitHub action, mm -hmm. uh, the YAML file is valid and we can, and they can receive the badge or a particular uh, approval by Linux Foundation or OpenSSF, it's right. Um, I mean, both directions are possible. Um, 
Uh, let's see here. That answers uh, include a... Because using the metric dashboard, I have seen that the scorecard sometimes cannot identify some best practice that a particular project have and that a human can identify. But it is not easy to create a tool that have no false positive, especially on the CI. Because, for example, if the CI is not implemented in the repo, but there is just the output in the repo, a person can use the same tool to scan the repo and see if the output is the same. So it is quite easy for a human to understand that there is an evidence, but the scorecard maybe cannot do the same at, yeah, so at it, the moment. I, I think, so, so I love the direction of this conversation as a whole. I'll say this mirrors the problems I'm facing internally with our own legacy product teams in IBM. <laughs> and we always have to account for a manual process. So what, what we've always done is we have a manual process that's well documented. And if you, and basically it requires uh, different tiers of separated reviews, a manual process. So maybe there could be like a third party attestation. So if you hit the indeterminate stage or a manual process, Maybe we can have a, a process where you can go through a third party attestation and attestation document gets put in place that can be you know validated from a transparency log or something, right? Like a six store transparency log, for example. That'd be awesome. Right. Yeah, well, I would say the pieces of evidence I, I, I would say that's all, all all part of the evidence. Um Yeah, but the, I'm saying that I'm, I'm saying that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I think I'm getting bulldozed over here a bit. I'm, I'm, I just want to get feedback on maybe re reusing some of the componentry that's being developed in open source to help solve this problem, saying that, you know, attestation records don't have to be generated through automated fashion. They could also be generated through a manual process and still be valid and still be referenceable from these configuration files. So then, then there could be a you know there be a documented process if it's indeterminate to, that somebody could be hired or look at independently, maybe even somebody from o, OSSF to go through and do it, and then actually sign off that they that more than one person from OSSF signed off and attested to it. That's a signed recommend uh, record that is publicly verifiable. Then that they can slap into their into their YAML file. I actually really like that idea of, of a, even if it's just uh, you know signed off by, and and the, the gobbledygook that means I, I guess it would be the signature, um, of of the previous document. All right, so I think we uh, let me try to split this up. Uh, we have various uh, problem statements. You know, the I think the other direction is probably worth recording as well, but it's almost its own thing. Um, you know, we'd also like for the various tools to provide outputs that could be used to generate an initial YAML file that could then be edited. Yeah, so I mean, what we have like in IBM is like it's mainly for clearance because it, but it, so basically we have segregated teams, segregated mm -hmm. starts. So we have like IP legal, we have a systems manager, which is at like kind of like a, a, a brand level. And then we have, you know, an independent security person. And one person in each of these segregated, all have to sign off in certain parts of the checklist. And so it's not one person signing off. And that checklist gets signed and attached to, you know, approved for clearance, approved for, you know, whatever. So. Okay, although I think we're talking about stuff at the project level. But I, I, I might. I'm trying I'm, to connect these dots. I'm sorry. I'm, can I, you explain? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping you confer how it could translate it to this space. But you know, again, it would be you know we'd have to have a process in place that we describe where we have at least two eyes from, that are segregated from two different companies, two different parts, maybe OSSF and maybe a partner org, or two different parts of OpenSSF. Things where the deal is not going to be cut, you know, or people are going to be. This deal looks good to me on the pull request. You know, we don't want that to happen, All right? So, <clears throat> I guess my 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 fear in this is that, like, no organization will be able to scale to do this at scale. We also don't want to become a a, a 
uh, bottleneck or a, you know, a, uh, especially from a perception perspective, we, we don't want, we don't want to be perceived as a gatekeeper to um, to open source. So no, I'm, not saying, having, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying the OpenSSF is the sole yeah. gate or, or arbitrary. Yeah. Now this this provides like what we see at other other groups where you know independent auditors can be brought in, or you know as long as you create a a system where people can get certificates and, and get their identities approved as approvers or whatever, you know mm. you do you, you manage it in an open source manner, right? So. Uh, but adding a so uh, sophisticated uh, um, and structured process and procedure, maybe, for, I mean, if for this document or this uh, YAML, it should be a sort of standard for open source project. If uh, the procedure are uh, um, too complicated to um, a big friction for the maintainers, maybe a lot of uh, open source project don't, uh, don't follow us and so the standard cannot be a standard. Well, I'll tell you uh, what my, my plans are to automate it through Prow, through a customized Prow. <laughs> so that's my plan in IBM at least. Yeah, the not thing, everyone uses Prow, so we'll have to make sure it, it, it can be generalized. Well, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a tool, but it can be automated as part of a CI you know, pipeline basically. Yes. But, Thanks, David. Th Thanks. Th th yeah. So I, I feel I've reached you finally with a thumbs up. So, <laughs> I've, well, wait, 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 putting things in the C in CI is uh, you, you, you generally have me agreeing it, 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 when you when you have the phrase and put it in the CI pipeline. <laughs> well, I mean, this, in general, this is the problem. I even have a hard time with describing to people in I in IBM, right? Because people are used to the manual process they've been doing for a decade, two decades, right? So it's basically we can they understand automating the build stuff and some of the test stuff and the scanning stuff. They understand that. They don't understand that the security holes. Then way way before that, it's all the stuff that is brought into the build system, and you have to work backwards. You have to create structure that the separation of responsibilities and teams. You need clear identities, and you need, you need to base. You have to bring those artifacts, those attestation artifacts of who created the, those things. The source code, just one of them. Configuration files, build configuration files. The pipeline configuration files, you know, for Travis Jenkins, Tecton, whatever it is, those, you know, those should all be signed things that come into the pipeline and then are signed holistically. I love that word at one of the other calls that guys used last week. Um, holistically, um, at, when it is produced in concurrence with the artifact, the container, the jar file, whatever you're producing at the end of the build, those documents are carried and related to the artifact. So, yeah. Okay. I, I think this conversation right. has been awesome. Um, we should try to get to, I, I at least want to get to the security reviews update uh, from Amir today. Yes, um, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know, we're, no, we're, we're excited. That's, that's not a, a bad thing. It's a really good conversation. We should, um, yeah, I, I hate being, being time police. Okay, and also there's an Alpha Omega update as well. I'll do that one at the very end, and that one's quick. Right. It's just, yeah. Okay, so, this, so Amir is next. Mir, you're up. Okay, so um, I made just a suggestion to the security reviews repo. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was speaking of the term holistic, kind of having a broad picture view of everything that's on there. So the main thing that I added was um, a new markdown file called overview of all reviews. It's probably not the best name. or. <laughs> Um, let me share the link here. Actually, I could share my screen, I think. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, okay. So, so it's, it's, as I mentioned, an overview. So a table that has everything that we've collected so far and something that I or anyone in this work group can maintain or update. I'm happy to update it over time. Uh, I actually have a couple that we'll hopefully be adding soon here. So um, yeah, what we have is a, the overview. So anyone can kind of get an idea of, of what is in this repo and have a direct link to the report or the post um, that goes into detail. Um, and one thing that kind of came out of doing this exercise that um, kind of ties into a, a thought is I kind of like these two fields 
funded by and facilitated by. Sorry, Mayor, if you're sharing something, we're not seeing it. Oh, oh, shoot. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, okay. I've, now I'm sharing now the screen. It. Can you see this table? Yes. Okay, yes. awesome. So yeah, so this is, uh, again, just to, to show a holistic view of the repo and everything that's in there. Um, it's chronological, essentially going backwards. So all the most recent stuff will be at the top. And um, yeah, the idea was to just kind of have an overview of everything in the repo, kind of shown in one kind of easy place. So anyone can look at this or search through this if they had a particular project in mind. Um, and it all links to the, um, to the actual report for more information um, and more detail on the reviews. Um, Amir, confirm, this is automatically getting generated? No, no, no. I, 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 I just created a basic table and converted it to Markdown. Um, if there's ah, a way okay. to, to automate this with, uh, with the metrics dashboard, that would be cool too. Um, that actually ties into my next point uh, nicely that um, in doing this, I, I like these two fields that I think, you know, as more organizations and uh, different groups get involved, you know, they, a big thing that you want is, you know, recognition for the work that, that your organization is funding um, and who's facilitating the work. So uh, I would want to suggest potentially putting that as a, uh, as a data point in the metrics dashboard under security reviews, if possible, to kind of give a good snapshot here in the dashboard um, to kind of give people more information on the security reviews. Yep, makes sense. Yep, uh, okay, okay, two things. Amir, I agree with your comment about the dashboard. And first of all, I love the table. The only thing I don't love is that you have to manually audit, uh, uh, update that. That yeah. looks like something that we should automate. And if there are fields that we need to make this table work, we should add those fields in our draft, add it to our list of things for the future, and let's just automate the heck out of this table. Because I agree, that table, um, you know, we should link the heck to that table because that is so much simpler <laughs> than our current approach. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think, yeah, especially as this scales up, um, it would definitely make sense to to automate it and um, have it feed into the other data points, too. Um, um, I'm, 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 I'm a visual person, so I always start with what I can. So I just kind of threw the table together. But uh, yeah, I'm totally open to that idea. If, uh, we want to work on that uh, together as a work group. I um, love suggestions on how to make that work. The, I mean, the that, table is sorry. As I say, that should be pretty easy to to automatically generate. The big argument will be what language to implement it in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tabs or spaces. Um, oh no 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 no! <laughs> I'm not ready for that uh, today. <laughs> um, um, space. Sorry, you, Luigi. Uh, you were going to say. Uh, I really. Uh, like the table, especially the columns where there are the security reports made by third party companies. But uh, I suppose that you have uh, uh, found them manually. And uh, it would be great if we can uh, uh, convince, uh, uh, I don't know, if we can add, for example, a label in the YAML where people uh, add uh, the, a link to the security review. So we can automate in this way the metric dashboard. And we can connect the metric da dashboard with the YAML. And uh, yes, there are some projects that uh, we scan with our scanner. And at the same time, uh, for minor projects that maybe we cannot scan in every day, we can use the data from the YAML that is based on the same format that we use. So technically, maybe at the moment, we cannot totally automate because uh, every project, every company share the audit in a different place. But at the same time, we can uh, uh, add this uh, in, uh, in the document related to the YAML. So we can create a YAML that can be used by the metric dashboard to automate the result Yeah. Uh, in the future. Yeah, some of that is already being done. Um, so we can definitely iterate, build on it. Um, but if you do have a review in the repo and it shows up in the dashboard, um, it'll link directly to the post in the repo, which 
you know, ideally we'll be posting all the reports in the repo as well. So I think we're definitely onto something here. And uh, yeah, if we want to work more on automating this table, um, maybe even making it a little prettier, um, I'm, I'm happy to collaborate with, with anyone on that. So. I mean, that, I, that looks like a half hour work in Python I can do. I, I, was gonna, I think you I just can, volunteer, uh, David. I, I, can, I, I can volunteer, but I need to know where is this table? Um, I think it's on a Google Sheet somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> Google Sheet somewhere. Oh my gosh, you really <laughs> did do this by hand. So, yeah. so what what you could do, I'm not saying you have to do it, but the the GitHub I, like the GitHub pages seems like a natural place to publish this. And then as part of publishing that, it goes through, parses the markdown files and does the thing, creates the table, then just dumps it, dumps it flat. So it so it's like a static site generator thing. Yep. Okay. Just, as one possible option. Okay. Yeah. Um. I I would just probably need a little bit of uh uh, uh direction in that. Um. But yeah. So where, that where's cool the too. where's the Google Doc? Uh. That that's what uh, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> okay. Let, let me find it. One second. But that was right, my so, main. So how's update. this? I mean, I can sit down and quickly write, walk through the the various files, and try to generate a table that looks like this. Probably in either Markdown or probably just generate HTML and uh, declare victory. And then, as I said, you know, then we can use a static, you know, once it's generated, we can use a static site generator and post on GitHub. Okay, uh, that sounds cool. Let me share it with the work group uh, real quick, Michael. I was going to volunteer because I haven't done, I mean, I felt like I haven't picked up a work item here in a while, but David, if you want to, it's all. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, but you know what? I have enough work. So if you want to uh, contribute uh, a a little script to run this through, this this is def definitely, it looks like one of those uh, I, relatively easy things to, to whip through. Uh, I agree. So. It does seem like a, you know, probably like a half hour of Python and I, I don't mind uh, sitting down and, and having some fun filled with that. So uh, yeah, we can. Um, so who, so uh, who, who is volunteering? I'm, I'm missing the name here. Hey, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, go, I'll, I'm happy to take it. Yeah, you can put my name. Uh, sorry, I don't have a Google Doc open. Okay, I, 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 don't, I don't see your name, so I don't know who is talking. Oh, Dylan. Dylan. Yeah, Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I will probably misspell your name, but uh, let me just put that in the notes here. So, Dylan. Uh, I, I can do, by the way, I understand all the like automatic generating of the table. Um, I wasn't, I don't think I caught all of what you're saying about the GitHub pages, but that's all right. I'll, I'll think up afterwards. I'll, I'll shoot someone. Yeah, we'll figure it out. That'd be easy. Just to make sure I get everything exactly right. All right cool. All right, I'll stop. I know Mike's got this thing. Okay. D <laughs> Dylan, uh, we'll make, uh, we'll create. Uh, Python script to generate uh, HTML table from existing security reviews using, and where's this Google using, uh, and uh, let's see here, Amir, where's, okay, that, that's, that. I'm gonna copy and paste that, because remember chat, all the chat stuff, um, Disappears once you're using Amir's uh, example as a starting point. All right. I think the key there is when you generate it, um, you know, include generation of a hyperlink from the from the row or at least the entry in the row to the details. Yeah. Yeah. To the details. You mean to like the uh, to the actual review? The, okay, yeah, that's what, right. yeah. perfect. Yeah, because basically they see a table. It has all this cool info. You click, boom, there you go. We can yep. uh, once you're done, we can then fight about sort orders and all the rest of that. But <laughs> I don't know why this wasn't. We didn't do this. Yeah, great, great idea with this, man. It's uh, good stuff. Oh, thanks, Dylan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, a lot of a lot of people are talking about, you know, it's important. I mean, it's just as important to disseminate the information, disseminate the data, and um, have it in a way that's easily digestible. And 
you know, if we plan on cranking out a lot more of these, I, I would love a lot more eyeballs on them. So yeah, thank you. Really appreciate that. And appreciate you taking on the, uh, the Python part of it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we are, we are out of time. We're at the top of the hour. Um, uh, quick uh, Alpha Omega update. Things are moving forward. I'm hoping to uh, get final approval from the governing board on the 5th of November. Uh, I'm working with uh, Shubra uh, in the Linux Foundation uh, and Abishak uh, at Google and a couple others to formalize the operating plan for uh, for calendar 2022. Um, more information to come. Hopefully, in the next in the next two weeks, we'll 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 have this in a place ready to go. Um, but I uh, want to let everybody know that things things are moving forward, so we're looking good there. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Uh, retweet the OpenSSF announcement. Have a good one, everybody. Thank Thanks. you. Take care, everyone. Bye.